Now we are going to discuss about the temperature belts and the various scenarios which are caused by the earth's curvative nature, the axis, then the tilt and the revolutions. Now see here, the rotations of the earth are studied very carefully and came into a conclusion that on June 21st, the earth is rotating on its journey. The sun's rays fall directly on the tropic of Cancer. Then it moves on on March 21st and September 23rd. It's on like on the North Pole and on the South Pole regions. You get the sun's rays falling directly on the equator. And from this day, December 22nd, the tropic of Capricorn, the sun's rays fall directly on the tropic of Capricorn. So in this way, the study of the journey of the Earth towards the sun on an elliptical orbit has been studied detailedly and we got the exact information about this. So to reveal for us what is the reason for the formation of the seasons. See, when the earth is moving on the tropic of cancer in the month of June, you get from June 21st onwards, you get the variation of the temperatures and the temperature started to slow down after it passes this June 21st. That is the reason why we have summer up to June and later we move on from there and if you observe the dates of March 21st when it is in the northern hemisphere that from March 21st the extremity of the sun rays increases falling on the earth because of that the temperatures will be increasing up for us and we move on into the summer season in the northern hemisphere at the same time when it comes to September in the month of September the sun starts to concentrate more on the other part of this equator that is on the southern hemisphere part. So southern hemisphere people will experience summer from September to December whereas we experience little bit slight lowdown of the temperatures and we move on to get rains and then to the winter season. And again moving on to the other part is December 22nd where the sun forms completely on the tropic of Cancer and from then the tropic of cancer region people will start receive more amount of sunfall or sun rays falling on them in this way the journey of the earth in a tilted manner in a fixed elliptical orbit has caused the reason for the formation of different seasons and different kinds of climatic conditions here we have to remember one great concept is that only on two days of a year you get the exact time of day and night that's 12 hours of daytime 12 hours of night time is found only on two days that's on march 22nd and september 23rd these two days the day is 12 hours and the nights are also 12 hours. This is the exact division of the daytime of 24 hours. You get the daytime 12 hours, the nighttime 12 hours, which means that it is equally divided days and nights, and technically the term is equinox. As we have two, we call it them as equinoxes. Equinoxes are nothing but March 21st and September 23rd which means that the daytime is 12 hours exactly and nighttime also 12 hours where in summer you may have 14 hours of daytime and the remaining 9 hours of nighttime or in winter you have the morning 10 hours of daytime remaining 13 hours of nighttime in this way that variations are disturbed and you get exactly 12 hours of both equal divisions on March 21st and September 23rd that's why these two days are known as equinox. Now, what are the other effects of the Earth's rotations? So now, we shall discuss the effects of the Earth's rotation from various points of views. We have studied it and we have come to a conclusion. Now. The other extreme effects, what we are experiencing it, like in India, we have the sunshine. In summer, you have more. In winter, we have less. But there are countries which do not experience the exact sun rays and they have daytime for six months and nighttime for six months. That's because as on the top of the poles you get the angle of the sun rays is very high and this angle will make the sun rays to get highly diluted when they move on to the region. So because of the regions which are located above than the Tropic of Cancer 
they experience a very dim light of the sun and at the same time they have daytime in the entire six months span of time that is like when the earth is rotating in the entire northern hemisphere they have that tilt of that particular portion of the pole region like for example it is in the north the northern part of the pole region will have the sun rays for six months directly and the other southern part will have complete darkness for six months and when it moves tilted towards the other part then it moves to the southern hemisphere then we get six months daytime in the other part and six months night time for the corresponding part which is having daytime till that time so these are the extreme efforts or dangerous things of six months day or nights now in these climatic conditions for example if you don't have sunlight for six months it's my six months night time the ice gets completely frozen the climatic conditions will not allow any kind of plant or to do any kind of vegetation to grow there we need at least 25 degrees of celsius temperature which needs to warm up the earth to get the fertility of the seed and the fertilizers so that the seed can break up and born and then lead into a plant but after six months when the nights disappear and daytime comes there also we can grow some kind of plants like mosses lichens algae etc the few plants which are grown here and now we have started to use a new greenhouse effect climatic conditions in order to give a specified climatic condition for them by generating artificial heat for the plants to make them to grow we have to see how far it is going to be successful for this in this lesson we have discussed the various movements of the earth what are the basic reasons for the movements of the earth the curvative nature of the earth the axis point the tilt and also the effects of the earth that is the reason why we have the daytime the night time the four different seasons at different timings it is varying from northern hemisphere to southern hemisphere and in southern hemisphere to northern hemisphere in this way we can understand the earth's movements and all these things very clearly if you understand the basic concepts of the movement of the earth